again with another model in box for view. I think today's model subject doesn't really need much of an introduction, does it? Um, we're obviously looking at um, British Air Aircraft Corporation's Aerospatial Concorde. And the model subject that I'm doing an inbox review on today is the Airfix kit in 144th scale. Now, the image that's actually portrayed here is an image taken, I believe, from another Concorde. Um, other Concorde flying up close. Or there were instances of RAF aircraft taking pictorial images of this aircraft on behalf of British Aircraft Corporation later on in Concorde's career, and it could possibly be from another military aircraft serving in the RAF. But it is quite a nice image, um, and I've, I quite like I quite like Concorde's shape. It's quite a beautiful shape, isn't it? Um, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the Airfix kit when I go through the sprues a little bit, but we'll go through the boxing history first of all. So we'll just take this picture off and start off in 1966 when Airfix originally released the Concorde um, in this format on a Type 3 red stripe box in the BOAC prototype markings for Concorde as she would have looked as envisaged, uh, as envisioned rather by BOAC. Um, now, there were some differences to the original prototype and the production aircraft tooling for the Airfix kits. And basically, the tail fin and the training edges of Concorde's wings and the leading edge plan form of Concorde's wing were slightly different. And I do believe that the air intakes were slightly different as well. And there are also differences to the aircraft's forward section in the model format. And I think the forward section had no windows whatsoever, but they were sort of embossed into the plastic. And it's quite interesting because Airfix are um, going to bring out the prototype version of Concorde as a re-release in 2019. Um, as part of their vintage series, but this kit was originally released in 1966 on a red stripe Type 3 box. 1966 was also a year release for Concorde as an Air France um, prototype livery, and this was covered by Craftmaster by Air, uh, sorry Airfix by Craftmaster, and it's basically the same aircraft. Same sprues, everything was exactly the same, but it was in Air France prototype markings. And as you can see, the difference in the aircraft is quite striking. There's no blue forward section of the airframe. The wings are now silver, and there's a blue sort of, if you like, um, a Y-shaped um, logo to the tail fin. And it is strikingly quite different. 1966 there for, for Airfix by Craftmaster. Um, and then in 1969, Airfix re-released the prototype Concorde in the Air France colours in, on the Type 3 red stripe box. And this was um, the second release of prototype Type Concorde uh, by Airfix before the turn of the 1970s. So that's 1969 there. In 1971, MPC got on the bandwagon with a Concorde SST. Now, in America, the Concorde was known as the supersonic transport, which is why it was called the SST. Um, and these were some of the ideas for the livery of Concorde at the time. Um, there was no way on Earth that Concorde was ever going to fly in these colours. And I'll explain that to you a little bit later um, when we go through the boxing history. But that was 1971, and then PCs boxing for the SST, which was the Airfix Concorde prototype. 1973, Airfix re-released on a Type 4 box the BOAC livery for the Airfix prototype Concorde. And I think this was the last time the prototype Concorde was released. As after this, the tools... The, I don't think the tool was revamped. I think they actually had a new tool for the new Concorde production aircraft. But that was 1973, and that was the last prototype release of that kit. And then in 1977, this was just one year after Concorde started her commercial flight 
and commercial services for British Airways and Air France. The Sky King range um, released a Concorde retool kit, and this wasn't a retool, it was a new tool model, and it incorporated um, clear glazing for the forward um, cabin windows. And also the tail fin was revised and the wing plan form shape, especially in the trailing edge, was completely revised. And the, the aircraft kit itself looked strikingly quite different from the prototype model. Um, so that was 1977. And then in 1979, US Airfix um, got onto the bandwagon and one of the companies that had signed up to the Concorde program was Braniff International. Um, and Braniff, uh, Braniff, Braniff International's livery was to look very much like this, with an orange-red uh, tail fin flash and the stripe going all the way down the window line, all the way to the nose cone. But the aircraft was to be predominantly white. And the reason why this was to be predominantly white, because Braniff International airliners generally were bright orange, entirely bright orange usually with silver wings but the reason why concord livery had to be white is because of the nature of supersonic flight with um with aircraft that can fly at around mach 2 aircraft um that fly through the air at mach 2 or mach 2 plus are subjected to an enormous amount of heat and this is transferred um into the airframe by making the airframe expand under the heat and to try and reduce the effect of the heat against Concorde's airframe the aircraft was painted in a special type of paint which reflected more light and heat and reduced the fatigue of the airframe under supersonic flight conditions and it reduced the amount of which the aircraft stretched and expanded in flight and Braniff International had to adopt this scheme because of that but of course eventually Braniff pulled out the program anyway um, and Concorde's were only ever sold to British Airways and Air France. 1979 gave way to 1980 and Sky King Real del Ciel, I think this is a company uh, that were designated for either the Spanish speaking market or just for Latin America I'm not quite 100% sure, but it was um, it was uh, a re-release of the original box from 1977. Um, and this kit was released in that year uh, quite successfully. So 1980 gave way to 19... Uh, sorry, 1980 was another re-release for the Concord and the Braniff International markings for US Airfix. Um... I think they took the kit off the market because Braniff pulled out of the of the uh, the program, the Concorde program, but then they re-released the kit in 1980 in exactly the same box. Um, I think it just had re-stamped re um, instruction leaflets to uh, to be incorporated in 1980s boxing. 1980 went through to 1982, and NPC got on the bandwagon. With the British Airways Concorde release. This was the same livery as the original box, but they revamped and like added additional dynamics to the box's artwork. And also, this is something that was included as well with that release, is that uh, the British Airways logo was just reduced to British on the side. Now, I do believe that the Concords did fly in this livery for a, a, a very short number of years, maybe two at the most. But the aircraft was very quickly relinquished to British, uh, returned to British Airways livery, um, and also the tail flashes were changed as well from red to blue. 1982 went through to 1983. British Airways again being put through onto the livery there, and this is the um, the Palatoy marketing release for Mattel Incorporated ownership of Airfix at the time, where they put the kits made up onto a blueprint. Um, and put that emblazoned over the front cover of the box and it gives you an idea of what the model would look like and it's a, it's actually a nice looking kit, a really nice looking kit indeed. Um, as I said, I've always liked Concorde's shape. I thought she was a very beautiful and graceful shape. 
Um, <clears throat> and that boxing shows the lines quite well. 1983 goes through to 1987. A new box um, format this time. Um, taking away all the background of the sky images and incorporating the new British Airways livery with a blue fin flash and also an Air France livery um, with the red, white and blue fin flashes as well. Um, this was marked as a special edition kit and it commemorated the 19... Uh, sorry, it didn't commemorate. It, it brought out the 1987... Um, updated livery for Concorde and this is what they look like in those years right through to about 1990 or 1996 I believe when the aircraft has changed livery again and I'll show you that in a minute. 1987 goes through to 1988 and the box was exactly the same as the previous box only in the top uh, sorry middle of the right hand side edge of the box there you've got some airfix flying hours um, which was quite nice uh, and those were added to the kit in that year. You can see there that Concorde was released in Series 6. Clearly marked on the box there, you can see. 1988 went through to 1994. It was 94 when they changed the livery to fly the flag. I remember the advert for British Airways on the television where it said you fly the flag and that was the, the flag that was put onto the airframe's tail fin. Um, and this this uh, this boxing went through majority of the 1990s, and I do remember this box being on the shelves quite often. 1994 went through to nine. Uh, sorry, 1994 was reiterated in 1994 with the original box artwork. It was probably to get rid of some of the original box art boxings left over from Mattel's ownership. Um, and by 1994, of course, the McGuinness pair would, were owning this aircraft. Uh, this company, Airfix, was brought up by the McGuinness brothers, um, and the kit was released under the Lodella label. And again, I think this was for Latin American countries, um, Spanish-speaking countries certainly, but prob probably just Latin America at the time. Um, so that was 1994. And then in 19, as 2005, sorry, this box was introduced with the fly the flag livery, um, blah, 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 same as usual. Serial numbers changed to 06182. And this is the boxing kit that I've actually got a model of to inbox a view for you today. Although the box is a little bit um, tired and worn. And I have got an image with uh, an, an issue with this particular kit which I'll, I'll go through when we go through the sprues. 2005 eventually went through uh, to another release in 2005. This is a starter kit, similar type of livery to the original 1980s boxing that was released the decade before. Uh, serial number changed to 08666. The one before was 06182. And this was a starter set which incorporated six paints, a brush and a tube of glue. So 2005... Then, um, now then, I haven't got an image, but um, this is an image of Concorde in, from a side view. I don't know what's happened there. From a side view, but basically, Concorde has been re-released in 2019 as a vintage series kit, and it's going to be the prototype model. So um, it'll be nice to see that kit coming back on the market. I just want to pan the camera down now and show you the kit in question that we have on bench here. And that is the kit in question. There she is. It's a very large box. That's my hand over the box. You can see it's it's quite a big box. But Concord itself inside is quite a long kit. It's not a very sp Spanish kit. You know, its wingspan is quite narrow, but it's quite a long kit. We'll just take the box lid off. And um, I'm going to put... <laughs> put the instructions over there take all this out here and put this down there have a look at those in a minute and then we'll have a look at the sprues in a minute but we'll just put all this down into the box here so we can um, don't want to miss anything 
Sorry about this, I'll just take a couple of seconds, it won't take long. I just don't want to miss anything that I've actually got in here at the moment. Right, so what I'll do is I'll just put that oops, on there like that. There we go. And then we'll go through the instruction leaflet. The instruction leaflet on the kit is quite sizable. It's A4. There's quite a few um, there's quite a few pages to this instruction leaflet, but the front cover is basically typical Airfix. Um, you've got the Airfix logo in the top left hand corner and some information in different languages on the front, the usual stuff. Interesting to note that in 2005's release, of course, Hornby owned Airfix in that year. So this boxing is actually a Hornby release, not a McGuinness release, which was the previous models. The paint plan here, there are actually three paint plans that come with this kit there's the 1997 fly the flag paint plan which has that funny looking um fin flash on the top british airways on the side fuselage there yep and the paint colors are gloss 22 and matte 33 predominantly throughout the kit I'll be using some additional colours, obviously, to do this as well. Then you've got British Airways 1988, which is the blue fin flash. And this is the version I'll be doing with this model. Again, it's gloss 22, which is gloss white, and matte, 20, matte 33, which is matte black. And on the back page, you've got a 1988 Air France edition as well on the, on the page. Um, and again, it's the same colours. Uh, they're also telling you to use... 11, 22 and 33, so whatever colour 11 is, I'm not 100% sure, but it will become apparent. Um, but they're quite clear, quite clear instructions for the kit, which is quite nice. The model itself builds up in nine steps, and there aren't a huge number of parts to this kit. Um, and I'm guessing this kit will actually build up quite fast, quite quickly indeed. On the back of the inside, uh, sorry, page one, you've got some safety instructions and some guides and tips. Um, and it's all in different languages. It's quite nice. And then you've got an assembly icon guide there, which uh, are just basically key pitch pictures that are placed into each section to show you what to do with each part and whatnot. Um, section one and two quite easy to follow. You've got a number of doors and some side windows to the cockpit there on both the starboard and the, and the port side fuselage half, which are there, you can see them. Quite easy. And then section three and four are the engine nacelles assembly. Um, quite easy to follow, not an issue there. Section five is the airframe assembly where you put the wings and the fuselage halves together and that's that forward cockpit canopy. You will need some weight in this kit. Um, it's saying five grams, but I would put some lead shot in the, in the nose quite forward as well, because the tail on this kit, although it's not horrendously tail heavy, it is slightly tail heavy. I'm, um, I remember building this kit before when I was in my teens and uh, I didn't put any weight in the nose and it definitely sat on its, on its tail, which was a shame. Section 6 and 7 are the main undercarriage oleos and wheel assemblies there and this is where I have my issue with this kit because parts 31 and 29 in that section there in this kit are actually missing the two pinned main undercarriage wheels um, and I am having a bit of a wrangle with Airfix at the moment because they're telling me we don't have any parts but they are releasing the prototype Concorde later in the year and they're just ignoring me. On my emails, I do have problems with Airfix occasionally here and there. I don't have problems with other companies, but Airfix can be a bit uh, problematic over older tooling kits. Um, they just don't want to talk about supplying parts from new tooled kits to replace old parts and the older tool ones. Section 8, you've got the undercarriage installation with the nose wheel assembly there and all the doors. Um, in the lowered position and then you've got an option for all the doors in the raised position with the undercarriage raised and then section nine you're just basically putting the tail cones to the engine the cells there the exhaust system um, had variable cups for the exhaust system for thrust reversers on this aircraft which was yeah 
They must have gone through a hell of a life, those things. So that's the instructions, quite easy to follow. The markings, or decals, or whatever you like to call them, transfers, whatnot, I've actually got one set of markings missing from this model because the Air France markings are not present, which is a shame. But the version that I want to do, there they are. They're the markings for that. Common to both, or all three. The blue fin flashes, yeah, they look quite good. The register on them is quite good as well. And these transfers, they're not bad, actually. I mean, they are, they are a little bit raised. You know, there's, there is a little bit of a ridge there, but the backing film seems to be quite clear. And it, it looks all right to me. There's the modern British Airways fin flash. By the flag. There you go. Quite easy. I also like the fact that this serial number on the model that I want to build is GBOAC, which is British Overseas Aircraft Corporation. Yeah, so that's, a, that's the decals. Um, they're not bad, not bad at all. We'll just quickly have a quick look at the transparencies. Because the transparencies on this kit are quite nice. There's not a lot to them, but they are quite nice. Now then, first of all, put that down there, we have the side windows that go in the fuselage halves. And I think you'll agree, they're not bad. I'm just trying to get this into focus for you. There you go. They're not bad, are they? They're quite clear. Um, you're not going to see an awful lot because when basically you'll, I'll be uh, darkening down the entirety of the inside of the cockpit uh, area and that's the forward window as well and that's quite clear as well isn't it I think that will paint up quite nice too although the, the actual veins on that window are a bit vague aren't they I'm not quite sure how that will paint up but it looks like it will be alright so let's just put these transparencies back into this little plastic bag I've got here because I want to try and keep them nice, which is good. I've um, got a couple of loose parts here. I just want to show you this. This is one of the pinned wheels. just want to show you the detail on this wheel because the detail on it isn't bad. When you think this is 144 scale, I don't think that's that bad. It's got a few wheel nuts and there's a central hub there and a definite tyre. On that wheel which is quite nice quite like the look of that just keep that there and that there this is one of the variable um, the veins for the air intakes these are variable um, angle they they vary the angle and the amount of air that can be brought into the air air intake and there's one one of these in each end and engine the cell of course um, for people who have no idea what engines power Concorde, um, they're quite an interesting engine because they're Rolls-Royce Olympus turbo fat, uh, turbojet, but they're reheated versions of the turbojet, and they're also a slightly modified version of the same engine that goes into the Vulcan bomber. Yeah, that was an Olympus engine as well, but it was a non-reheated version of the same engine that goes in Concorde. And another interesting feature is that the Olympus engine also powered the QE2. Yeah, that was interesting. So, we've got a few parts here. Um, I'm not going to pedantically go through all the parts, but um, yeah. There's quite a lot of flash on this kit. As you can see, there's quite a bit of flash here and there. That's the engine the cell that's going to need cleaning up quite strikingly. The airframe itself is quite nicely cast but the nose section of this kit is probably going to need a little bit of TLC because I'm not sure what's going on there um, it might become apparent when I put it all together the wing plan form that's quite nice as well quite like the look of that there's some nice detail on the surface of this wing I don't know if you can see it there it's all raised obviously because this kit was molded in the 1970s but it's not overdone and it's it's quite nice you know the the actual the markings and the features on that wing are actually quite nice indeed and i think you know i think they'll paint up quite nice 
and the side wing section there just want to show you that as well some nice features on that too raised panel lines again but you can't have everything can you and then you've got some of those um, that's the rear engine exhaust ports and also there's a little wheel at the back here now a lot of people don't may may or may not know what that is but that's actually a buffer stop wheel for the tail section it actually had a retractable buffer wheel if you like to keep the tail off the, off the ground when the aircraft was rotating but more importantly when she was coming into land because concord had quite a large angle of attack it was quite acute and you had to have a little wheel on the on the back there to stop the tail cone from striking the ground when uh, when the aircraft was coming into land um i, w I don't want to show you too much of the, of the same stuff but basically the and the oleo wheel legs here they're quite nicely cast as well i quite like the look of those and there's a part here this goes back to the early days when the concord was originally released in the 70s because the original livery if you check back in the in the video you'll see that the original livery had a stripe that used to go down the window line and airfix oils used to give you a tool to pierce the transfer once the transfer had dried and relieve uh, relieve the transfer of the window section and if you wanted to you could fill these little window slots with clear plastic you can get some clear plastic coat i can't remember what it's called it's like it's like canopy maker if you if you like but you can buy some a little bit of flash on the airframe there as well on the nose cone that needs cleaning up and that's the um the thrust reversers cones there they're, they're okay a few struts for the undercarriage and they're the undercarriage legs and the other the other and the cell so that's the parts for the airfix concord there is something i do want to bring to your attention if you have a look on the spine at the back here of the airfix concord um one of my subbers is building the revel kit of this aircraft as part of his Duxford collection and the spine there's a, there's a little blister on the top of the spine of the Revell kit and it's on it's visible on the airfix kit and the airfix kits blister is definitely an awful lot shorter than the one on the Revell kit and it's quite interesting because I've had a look at some photos and the spine is that size in the 70s but by the 90s it's the size of the Revell kit. So the Revell kit is actually more accurate for a more modern Concorde. But that is also accurate if you wanted to build a Concorde with 70s livery. Um, but I want to build one with 80s livery and I think that spine is also too short for then. I think it's something to do with um, GPS tracking and navigation. So it would be quite nice to have it right wouldn't it but uh, unfortunately airfix yeah they didn't read all that which was a shame so that's the um let's put all this back in here that's the parts and uh, i'll just put all this back in back in here i don't want to lose any of these parts I'll just put that onto the top of there. The box lid on this kit is a little bit naff. It's, it's dropping to bits basically, but yeah, you can't have everything. It's, it's the way it is. So what we'll do quickly now is I just want to go through the gump on the kit um, so that I can bring this video to a close. There are a number of options and costs for Concord. Um, and I have included all of the options and costs for all the different scales, but there aren't a large number of them. So it will be quite easy to go through them all. And I think it's quite worthy of note to go through them all because there are um, a number of large scale ones which are quite interesting. Anyway, the kit we're doing an inbox review on today is the Airfix BAC Aerospatial Concorde serial number 06182 with a release date of 1977. The kit's molded in one 144 scale 
and the model actually has decals for three versions. One is GBOAC, British Airways Concorde serving 1988. One is GBOAF, British Airways Concorde serving 1997. And the third um, is a French um, Air France Concorde serving 1988 as well. There are 49 parts on two white plastic sprues and three parts on a clear plastic sprue, totaling 52 parts in total. And the dimensions of the model are about 16 and a half inches long by about seven and a half inches in span. And it will probably sit around three and a quarter inches high on its undercarriage. Now, the options and costs, um, in, they're, they're interesting. The smallest scale available for a Concorde is a Starfix kit, which is molded in one seven hundredth scale. I've got no pricings for this, but to be honest with you, I wouldn't worry about it. The kit is absolutely awful. And also in one three hundredth scale, Hella did a Concorde, which is available often for as little as four pound, but usually around about six to eight pound. Um, that's not a terrible kit, but it's not great. Also, Revell Concorde mini kit reboxed the Hella kit in one three hundred scale, and that's usually available for about three quid. And the Hella kit in one three hundred scale was also reboxed by Model X as a Concorde, and that kit I've seen sell for about five pound. One two hundred and seventieth scale. Limburg did a Concorde. Unfortunately, yes, they did do a Concorde. No pricing is available on that. But again, I wouldn't be too worried about it. It's not very good. In 1 200th scale, Academy Minicraft did a transportation set which comprised a Boeing 707, a Boeing 727, a Boeing 747, and a Concorde, along with several cars, several ships, and spacecraft, all in different scales. Um, got no details for pricings on those, but I've, I'm guessing they went for quite a lot of money, and they're incredibly rare nowadays. That's in one two hundred scale, and also in one two hundred scale, Nitto did a Concorde, which retails for about thirty two quid, and that kit apparently is quite nice. The Doyusha uh, Concorde, which is a rebox Nitto kit, and Malka Brothers also did a rebox Nitto kit of Concorde. Again, I've got no pricings on either of those two models either. In one 144th scale, Airfix's Concorde prototype retails for between 40 and 45 pound. The Airfix Concorde production aircraft retails for between 5 and 35 pound. Nitto did a 144th scale kit, which again I've got no pricings available, and the Revell offering um, is available for about 5 to 27 pound. Airfix by Craftmaster did the Retool Airfix prototype kit. Sorry, they did a reboxed Airfix prototype kit. No pricing is available on that. Airfix Lodella did a Airfix uh, production model of Concorde, reboxed at eight pound. Ace Hobby Kits Concorde did a Revell kit, reboxed. No pricing is available on that. Deusha did a Concorde, which is the X Nitto kit, um, and that's about ten to forty pound. And now Hasegawa Monogram did. A reboxed Revell model. MPC did a reboxed Concorde commercial aircraft version, and Plastic did a Concorde commercial aircraft version, and US Airfix did a Concorde commercial Airfix version. All four of those models, I'm afraid I haven't got any pricings for. One 132nd scale, Nitto did a Concorde SST, no pricings available on that, I'm sorry. But in 1 125th scale, the Heller Concorde in that scale is actually quite nice too. And that retails for anything between 6 and 28 quid. Heller also did a 1 100th scale, and this kit is really nice. Um, although it, it is more in line with the prototype style Concorde rather than the commercial airliner. Uh, the Heller kit retails for between 13 and 40 pound. But Heller also did a Heller Le Legion set including a Caravelle in 1 100 scale and a Concorde, and that kit retails for about 35 to £43. Pound. Nitto also did a 1 100 scale kit, standalone kit of Concorde, for about 100 quid, and that kit is really nice. Busco reboxed the Hella kit, no pricings available on that. Deusha reboxed the Nitto kit of the Concorde for about £40. Pound. 
Entex Industries did a Concorde, which is the ex-Nisso kit. No pricing is available on that. Frog also reboxed the old Heller kit. No pricing is available on that, but I'm guessing that's going to be dear because it's as rare as hen's teeth. And Testers did a Concorde SST, which is a Nitto kit. Again, no pricing is available on that. Now, believe it or not, Heller did a 172nd scale model of the Concorde, and it's a really, really tasty, nice piece of work. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, I have seen it go for as little as sometimes 10 or £15, pound, but it usually retails between £25 and £70. Pound. Um, Airfix also did a reboxed header kit in 72nd scale. That kit retails for around about uh, 25 to £50. Pound. And Ravel also have got on the bandwagon with a reboxed header kit. And that kit retails between 38 and 60 pound now believe it or not there is a 148 scale option by hph models of concord and this is a fiberglass and resin kit but be aware that the hph model of concord is a one-piece airframe made of fiberglass and the resin parts um, make up the rest of the model it's incredibly dear it's about 440 quid to buy and i've seen this model um in an inbox review on youtube and i'm going to be honest with you i didn't th i wasn't that impressed it didn't look that accurate conclusions the fx concord is an older release kit as are most of the options so it should fare well against its competition it is noted that um by the pro builders and pro reviewers that the fx kit um, and all the other models, in actual fact, in sort of one 125th scale to one 100 and then to one 144th scale, they're all pretty much of a muchness because they're all around about the same sort of age release. So there's not a lot to choose from. And if you can get a kit for as little as five or ten quid, you're doing all right. But there are, there are issues, according to some builders, with the Revell model. Um, in it that it has some steppy sort of fitting issues now i've looked at um, my subber's uh, build updates he's got a couple of updates um, and he's building the duxford wing museum aircraft collection and the concord prototype is one of those and he doesn't there's nowhere in his videos that suggests that there are fit issues with the Ravel Concorde kit. I'm not quite sure what is going on there, but I, I haven't seen him complain about any fit issues with that model. So anyway, I have built this kit when I was younger and I don't remember it being any fit issues with the Airfix kit either. Although there isn't much in the way of reviews online for the Airfix kit. Now the reviews that are out there don't praise the Ravel kit too much as it requires a bit of prep work to get the fit right. The 48 scale HPH kit comes with a one piece airframe and it has serious abnormalities in the casting. The Heller 172nd scale kit looks superb, but it will take up a lot of space being only three foot long. And steer clear of the small scale stuff as they are generally pretty terrible. The prototype Airfix Concorde is interesting as it looks very different from the production aircraft. It definitely has differences in its planned airframe especially around the tail and the training edges of the wings. Um, and it's also worthy that Airfix are bringing out the prototype Concorde kit as a release in their vintage series late this year and will be interesting to see which mould they use to release later later in 2019. I'm guessing they're just going to use the prototype model as it would be just a re-release of the original kit in the original livery and everything. Um, but it would be quite nice if they released the um, re the, the new tool kit as well from the 70s, but maybe did something a little bit with it, maybe updated a little bit, perhaps even put a hinging nose, that would be really nice. Um, I don't know of a model on the market of Concorde that actually has a drooping nose, um, but I have seen a few models made up by pro builders where they've actually incorporated a hinging nose and it makes the aircraft look quite interesting on the ground, you know, with its undercarriage down. So anyway, that's the inbox review. I hope this video has been of some use. 
um, an unusual subject for me. Normally I do military stuff, but um, I have done a few civilian aircraft before in the past, and I'm, I'm quite looking forward to this build. I think the Airfix Concorde, um, I'm hoping it's going to uh, bring the aircraft's airframe to a graceful realism. It'll be nice to see that. Anyway, I hope your modelling projects are all going smooth. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you for the next video. Bye-bye for now.